Why, howdy, folks. <laughs> yep, Mike's got himself a big old American-made chainsaw, so everybody watch out. Now, have you got yourself an old, wore-out Echo CS590 chainsaw like what I've got here where you've just tried everything to fix her and just can't seem to get her to run right? Well, you're in luck because you're in Mar Mike's garage, and what we're going to do today is that we're going to go through this chainsaw with just a few bolt-on parts and fix everything that could be possibly wrong with it but at the same time, we're going to upgrade her, give her a little more length, a little more girth, and we're going to give her a little more horsepower. How about that for an intro, huh? Yeah, I got myself a real arts and graphics department now, Mara Mike. Things are going to change. So, I have been down a rabbit hole with the Echo CS590. I have been trying to fix it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, my first attempt was to try to get a CS590 carburetor, which was a disaster. You only can get the OEM carburetor for like 150 bucks. There's one on Amazon, an aftermarket one. I kept ordering and it'd show up without the carburetor. So, essentially a cheap Amazon carburetor for the CS590 doesn't exist right now. But I did a little research on the old YouTube and found out the big brother to the CS590 is the CS620. Now, these are both 60cc saws, but the CS, CS620 is about two or $300 more expensive than the 590. And the thing is that it has a little more power. Now, why does the CS5620 have more power? Well, two things. First of all, it's got a little bit of carburetor, which I was able to find on Amazon for like $60. Awesome deal carburetor kit with all the different filters, plugs, and everything, and it's the same exact size as the 520, but it does breathe a little better. And also, the CS620 gets more power because it has a limitless ignition system. So you can actually buy the CS620 coil for about $80 and strap it onto this sucker. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna really give you your more power because it's gonna allow it to rev higher all the way through the cut. And so, you know, that means more revs, more cutting, more teeth getting at it. And while we're at it, why not upgrade the bar and chain to the biggest bar that is rated for the 590, which is a 24 inch bar. Got me one from Oregon here. Made in Canada, pretty cool stuff. Give her about an extra six inches, which is always a good thing. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and we're gonna start with the carburetor, super easy to replace. Then we're gonna do the ignition and the, uh, then we'll do the chain and the bar and then we're gonna test her out and see how she cuts. So <laughs> stick with me, this is gonna be a fun one. All right, so our first step is to replace the carburetor. Now don't be scared, this carb is super easy to replace. So take off the air filter cover, Bust out your air filter itself. And then the only thing holding on this carb is these two screws right here and right here. These are T27. Use my fancy boom, boom, baby. Make quick work of that bad boy. And then pull it out, this little cover. And there you go. Now your carburetor is loose right there. You're gonna have two lines. This is your fuel line. This is your suction line, goes into the gas tank. This is your pulse line. It's a vacuum line off the back off the motor itself. So now we want to take off these two fuel lines. You're probably going to have a couple clips on there. Just snap, snap, snap them off. And take the pulse line off first. That one slides off. Now your other line, sometimes these get a little stuck. So what I like doing, just get your uh, pair of pliers on there and just twist it just a little bit to break that, that suction on there. And this one, now she's a, she's a leaker, see? So go ahead and clip something. Sometimes some vice grips. I got this clamp right here and just slide that on there. And that's it, ladies and gents. Now your carburetor should be clear. So what I do, I take the choke lever off, just slide it on off of there. And then this other one, there's your throttle. You just twist it, slide it off like so. Now at this point, that's all you've got to do to pull the carburetor off. But it is always a good idea to replace your fuel lines. And this fuel line kit does come the fuel lines do come with a carb kit, super easy. Now, this one's real easy to replace right here. So all you do is you pull off that line, replace it, cut another one, and this is your, it goes into the tank, and you can pull this out and then replace the tank line itself. My only caution is when you put it back in, make sure it's flush like this. It's got this little nipple right there, a little T, so it's gotta be all the way against the bottom. Because before <laughs> when I did this, I had it sticking out, it kept kinking the line, anyways. It was, a, it was a mess. So, and now this one here, your pulse line, this one's gonna be a lot harder to replace. 
it goes inside there. There's a cover on the motor that goes a vacuum line off there. Now to replace this, which I did, you've got to take apart essentially the whole chainsaw. Uh, that's a lot more than what this video is going to be. So what we're going to do now, we've got our Wabro carburetor. And look at this. This is the new one. Look, they look the exact same. You new one on the right, old one on the left. Now what is cool, if you're into the adjustment screws, look at that. We've got no limiter caps on the adjustment screws on the new one. This one I've ripped off before. So this one's a lot easier to adjust. So we're going to slide this one on. Now a couple notes about this carburetor. I've already used it and it's set pretty good from the factory. The, the low and the high speed jets are both about a one and a quarter turn out, which is a good initial setting. So I wouldn't mess with it at all. And we'll go ahead and uh, strap her on and get her running. So to get her on, let's see. So your shiny one up there is gonna be to the left. First thing I like to do is hook up the throttle. I'm gonna just slide it in there like so. Oh, 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 wait a second. I got her backwards. <laughs> I'm an amateur chainsawer. All right, so slide her in there like so. All right, and then you're gonna take your, your pulse line right there, and then take your suction line, make sure it goes across. I like to weave it back here in the back. It goes across over the top. Hopefully you got a new one. And just slide it back on there. Now it is a good idea to put some little uh, zip cords around each one of these zip ties, I mean, just to make sure they're tight. But that's essentially all you've got to do. And then don't forget your, your choke. Boom. Come on, get in the hole. Boom. So there you go, ladies and gents. You've got a new carburetor. Now, before we cinch this thing back up, it is a good idea. This here is your fuel tank vent, and it just slides on out. It should. And you've got a new one with the kit. Bam, bam. See, that's super easy. This is a little vent. Now those vents can get clogged up, so it's always a good idea to replace them and slide it back in there. Super easy on the Echo. All right, so we've got, hopefully you put new line here, new line in here. Now also, the kit comes with a new fuel line filter. So to do the fuel line filter, go in here and you're gonna see the actual fuel line inside of there. And what you can do, you take a little hook, pull it out, the little fuel filter is just on the end of that line. And so at that time you can replace the, the fuel line and the fuel line filter. We're not gonna go through all that because there's about a zillion YouTube videos on that. We are just gonna concentrate on, on hot rodding this Echo out. All right, so we've got our new carburetor on there and we're just gonna zip it back on. Should be easy breezy. Now when you zip it back on, I like to put the choke on when you get that cover on. Let's see, slides on there like so. Now you do have to kind of line it up a little bit. You can just slide your screws in there. Sometimes you get lucky for YouTube. Come on, there you go. And then you just go ahead and cinch it back on. Now when you cinch it back on, you'll notice I am not using power tools because you don't want to make these super tight. You just want to tighten her up like so. And also, when you tighten this thing up, there's going to be a little air intake there. Sometimes you got to get a screwdriver in there and just line it up, make sure it slides on in there. Now, I have officially done this about 53 times because, I, oh my gosh, I rebuilt the original carb back and forth, back and forth. I just couldn't get it to run right. And so using this 620 carb, I tell you what, this thing's going to sing like a damn sewing machine. We're going to light her up. So it's that easy. And what's cool about the kit is that it comes with everything. It even comes with a new air filter. So we slide a new air filter on there. Boom, boom. And then your cover. Now when you do the cover, make sure to pull your choke out because that cover slides behind the choke. Now, if you just want to stop here, this is probably going to fix your issue and then it's going to run. But we're going to do a couple more upgrades. So next, I'm going to get underneath here and we're gonna replace the ignition coil with this guy here. Now this is, it looks exactly the same as the other ignition coil, but everything I read is that this is limitless. So it'll allow it to rev much, much higher. So I'm gonna figure out how to install this and we'll get back to you. <laughs> what a shot. All right, so our next step is that we're gonna get to the ignition coil. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that same T27 bit and just start ripping the screws off. So we gotta take the cover off which 
There's that screw there. There's another screw here. Super easy. All right. All right, so we got those two off. Now there's one more hidden screw down below here. I can see you gotta kind of wiggle it and shake it, get down there in that little tiny shiny spot there. And let's see if we can get the old DeWalt down in there. Yes, sir. Go ahead and rip her out. I can see my dexterous wrist action. Oh yeah. Now you've got to slide it out. Now your compression release is gonna fight you a little bit and your spark plug situation. So as you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the air cover cover. That way I can pull my spark plug boot off and then go ahead and rip her up. Come on, there we go. Now you can see everything there on the left-hand side is your coil. Uh, it's also a good idea to take off the, the engine brake right there. I don't know what they call it. That's actually the chain brake. Now, don't go ahead and take off both sides. If you take off that right side, there's a spring in there. It gets to be a mess. So if you just pop off that left side and push it up, that's going to give you enough leverage here to go ahead and get the rest of them off. See, now I'm going to go ahead and just rip the rest off super fast and awesomeness. Now, a good idea here is to try to not lose all your screws. They are all T27, which is very, very handy, uh, but you definitely do not want to lose them. So there you go. You've got one, two, three, four, five on the side here. Go ahead and rip them off. Now, there's actually two more I have forgot. Those two little boogers right there. Bam, bam. Yes, sir. Now this chainsaw here, she's been, she's been well used down around Huntsville, Texas, cutting down dead pine trees. So she's had a little, little extra, little extra life. All right, see here, I'm just struggling a little bit getting it off. Probably because I forgot a screw like a moron. All right, this is my first voiceover. So it's a little interesting. So see, I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, there you go, get that screw right there. Yeah, I totally lost the audio to this video, so I'm kind of doing like a baseball sports announcer type deal. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> you can see what a, what a jackpot I am losing screws. All right, you can see here I'm going in with a manual, oh yeah, old manual style, throw a little off into her, get her. That's because my big old tool wouldn't fit down there and get that little screw out. All right, so go ahead and pop the cover off. Finally. Now this is going the extra mile. Most of you are probably not going to want to mess with this ignition because the carburetor is very easy to replace, but this ignition coil uh, is going to be much more difficult. So you can see there, we've got access to the ignition coil, which is held on by two bolts. As of right now, I only see one of them. So you can see me take this one off. Oh my gosh, I've got so much balance and skill going. There you go. There you go. Good thing he's using his right wrist. Right wrist is definitely stronger than the left for some reason. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, taking that, that little screw out. This is a pretty, pretty slick saw to work on. First of all, it's orange, so you cannot lose it. Second of all, the Echo is made in America, so that is always, always a plus. Made in America, probably with about a thousand Chinese and Japanese parts. I can see there I found, oh, well, oh, yep, dropped the freaking bit again. Oh, this is some exciting, exciting YouTube action. There you go, getting the old, old DeWalt hammer drill after it. Way too much tool for this job. But I can see you get the hat out of the way. There we go, and she is off. All right, so there's just one, yeah, one big wire goes to the spark plug, the little wire goes to something else, probably a kill wire, so go ahead and pop that off. And now we have access to the coil. You can see on the left is the current coil. Come on, pull it down. There you go, dummy. All right, that one looks like it's an 83 GD or something like that. The one on the right is the new coil, nice and shiny. It does have a different part number. So hopefully this works out. That coil was about $80, and I'm gonna go ahead and list the Amazon link down below if you wanna get yourself one. All right, again, so the next part, as you can damn, see, we've got Damn, carbs are only 50 bucks, coal's 80. Here. So, no all right, let's go to the next here. step. So the first step, we've gotta pull off this old spark plug boot off the terminal, which I get the feeling this would be a bit of a challenge. So we're gonna do a little lubrication in there. Come on. I know this exciting content here. Maybe if I take the little See inside here, there's a little springy 
Maybe if I can take that out first. I hope we don't totally ruin <laughs> this freaking stock terminal, but I can see we're, we're pregnant on it now, so this is gonna happen one way or the other. Oh, come on. Okay. Well, we officially broke it, as you can see, but <laughs> I got the plug terminal out. And let's see if we could take out the little Springer. So now I really, really hope this new, uh, this new coil works because that thing went cheap. All right, so we got the plug, plug and wire boot and then the little uh, terminal thing. So now that we got tore apart, we are going to reinstall all the new spark plug stuff onto our new chainsaw ignition coil. Now the way it works is that this little clip here is the most important part. So it stabs into the actual plug wire and then it makes connection with the wire on the install. So it's like that and then your boot slides over it. And what it does is that this little clip, it's what slides over and makes connection on the spark plug. So without the boot, it looks like that. Kind of crazy and kind of <laughs> kind of gimmicky, but uh, that's how it works. Pretty wild. All right, so first thing we need to do is make a hole in our spark plug wire to sink that piece of metal into. You've got a couple options here. Pretty much anything will do. You, you can either take a, you know, a real small screwdriver, a nail, anything like that. I've got these fancy Craftsman little uh, pin tools here. So we're gonna go ahead and make a hole in it. And you wanna do it, you know, pre-measure it. So we're gonna eyeball it right about there-ish. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can make a hole. And don't go all the way through. Just go until you feel, yeah. I think I felt it right there. All right, so we've got the hole in there, as you can see. Oh, you can see I already screwed it up. Made the hole a little too tight, but I think we could make it work. There we go. I can see right there, it is in there. Kind of cool, huh? Very uh, simple. So now we're going to try to slide our boot over said spark plug wire clip. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more lube on here. Lube, lube really helps out. So a little WD, whatever you got that's slippery. All right. Let's see if this works for TV. And make sure to slide the little piece over first. Come on, baby. All right, it's going in there. I think we're gonna feel it set home here. This is freaking tight, guys. All right, now I've never actually done this, so <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. All right, so I felt it sink home, so go ahead and put your a plug in there and see if it... All right. See, we're a little off. There it goes. I can feel it snap in there. So that means we've got, we've actually got a connection. That's, that's pretty dang cool. All right, so we have got this reinstalled. So we got a new boot, new plug wire on here and everything else. So we are good to go. Now, if you don't have the old one, Stearns makes a little kit. It's pretty general. I think this would work on most plugs. Um, same with a little clip, you'll just move that a little closer into the end of the plug and the boot. And I'll go ahead and put an Amazon link to the aftermarket kit along with these little cool little pin tools. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this on the chainsaw and uh, we're gonna see if it works. <laughs> Stay with me. All right, now that we got our spark plug boot all set up on our new ignition coil, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the ignition coil, just slides in the same spot before. Now something cool I picked up in the last couple days is a T27 Klein Tools. You can get one of these for $11 on Amazon. This is the perfect T-handle wrench for working on these Echoes. I got tired of using the big boys because you really don't want to use too much force on it with what I was using was a little, little extreme. Now, I'm going to bolt this thing on there and I'm going to go ahead and just reinstall everything else on here without actually filming it. Because this video is getting to be like 30 minutes long, and I know y'all want the money shot of me ripping this thing. Hopefully it starts, because I have uh, never done most of what I'm doing in this video. So hopefully it works out for me. So hang on, in your next shot, I'm going to have this all put back together, and we're going to let her rip and see how it works. Alright, no money shot yet. We've got one more upgrade I forgot about we're going to make on the saw. We are going to put a new bar on it. Now the 
Echo 590 is rated up to a 24 inch bar. So I got the max in stock. It comes with a 20. So we're going to swap it over. Uh, real simple. You just take the couple nuts out here. I lost all the stock nuts. So of course, we got a custom job. Yank that off. Now these are going to be pretty gnarly. Now, Online, there's a cat running a 36 inch bar on a CS590. YouTube, it, <laughs> go check that on YouTube. It's pretty wild. I wouldn't do that. I don't think this thing's frames meant for that much, but she will run it. All right, so what we've got here, we've got a 24 inch bar. I bought this on Amazon for like $90. And this, I mean, it's gonna add a lot of length on this bar. And then I went ahead and got the chain. I'll go ahead and list both Amazon links. Uh, to these. Now when you install your chain, just make sure the cutting part is up front. This is a much larger chain. As you can see, you just slide it in here. Now Oregon does make bar chain matched sets, but for the 24 inch, it does not. So you got to order them separate, but all together is about hundred dollars. So for hundred bucks for a little extra length, an extra four inches for a hundred dollars, I'll tell you what, I'll give that any day of the week, ladies and gents. So go ahead and just hand tighten it, and then you're going to reinstall. Hopefully you've got the real nuts. All right. And you just wiggle it to that. All right. So I'm going to have to adjust the screw here. And what you do, you just adjust it till it slides in there, and then you slap it on. I'm not going to waste your time. You probably already know how to do that. But bless you, does look a lot better with that bar on there. So I am getting super, super boned up and excited right now. So we're gonna go ahead and slap this thing together. I'm gonna put a little gas in it. I went ahead and ordered the Amazon Saber. We're going all out. So this is a full synthetic uh, mix that we're gonna run in the gas and we're gonna let her rip. So hopefully this works out. All right, I'm excited. We're finally ready to test her out. I've got a new bar on here, new ignition, new carb, all sorts of new filters. So we'll see if it starts. Now, I really don't think it's gonna start because I don't really know what I'm doing, but we're gonna see anyways. Now remember, everything's at the stock settings on the carburetor, just what I bought off Amazon. So here we go. Couple there. Uh-oh, we had a light, we had a light. Run a little fast. Does work. We're gonna go ahead and do a little tuning. I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video 
on how to actually tune this saw in, and then we're going to come back and uh, let her rip. But hey, it actually works. It works a lot better. This thing wasn't running at all. So stay with me and let's try again. <laughs> I tell you what, we did a little fine tuning on her, and she is ripping. I mean, she's just wanting to eat that wood. So, Mike, get ready. You got a chainsaw with balls coming back at you. Now, I fine tuned it to about 2800 RPM on the low end, and then at the top end, we hit her all the way up to 13,000. Now, 13,000 is a thousand more than the stock CS520 because we've got unlimited ignition and a fatter carb with more fuel. So, with that, <laughs> Our mics out. This one was a lot of fun. Stay tuned. I will have a chainsaw tuning video next week. My mic out.